so um I'm fighting tooth and nail this um leaf miner and I don't think I'm winning. I put I sprayed neem, I sprayed um pyrethrum for a couple of days, I think three days. And it's still it's still coming. It's still coming like fierce. I mean, look at that. That's not good. That's just awful. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is just pull the leaves. I'm going to pull the leaves and uh, just put them in a pail of water to just kill whatever bugs are in the leaves. And then I'm going to try spraying again and spraying the soil again with the pyrethrum because I mean they're kind of at their end but I'm, I want to hope I want to save the seeds because it's bloomed stale long standing and um, the monstre de Vieuxfle varieties which I'm really loving you know the the um, the bloomsdale long standing this is mostly bloomsdale long standing and this is, this is some more of that. But um, I planted this last uh, winter, I think it was. And um, look at it, it's really doing well, actually. I mean, it has a little bit of um, the leaf miner, but it's really not, it's not tragic. I mean, it's actually doing fine. These leaves are robust, they're thick. They're nice and green, but there isn't a lot of leaf miner at all. And it's the same thing with these over here. I picked a bunch of leaves off of these over here, and they're going to seed, but there's no leaf miner at all in this batch. These were in the greenhouse all winter. So I think it might have something to do with um, the amount of time that they were allowed to mature overnight maybe that helped with um some of the resistance so i don't know i think i'm gonna try that again this next next fall i'm gonna plant some more in the fall and let them overwinter because that's really the best actually that seemed to really work best so i don't know so here's a perfect example of leaf miner you just see all the little squiggly lines. I read that um, when you see this, you can basically squeeze, the, just press against the leaf, both sides to kill the insect in there. It's a, it's a larva of a fly, and it's invisible. It's really just a clear, invisible transparent insect and then on one end you'll see a little bit of a uh, darkness that's that's basically fecal matter something like this this, this is, these are actually beets something like this oh my goodness this is a crab spider yikes well I'll leave that one alone for a minute but anyway, something like this, like this over here, I'm just going to pick the leaf off because it's just beyond help. But when it's just something like this, you can just press the leaf, or at least that's what I'm trying. It's the first time I'm doing this, so, alright, crab spider, alright, yeah, this one's, that's a goner. Collecting leaves. Um, my strategy here is to collect the leaves and let them soak in water, basically to drown the insects. And then I'm gonna, when when um, you know maybe in about five days or so, I'm gonna take that same putrefied mixture and basically use it as fertilizer. Sorry about my sniffles. Can I blow my nose? Covered in water. I'm just gonna leave it like that.
that. That's good. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm gonna turn this. I can't get over there. <laughs> turn it. No. Son Zach helped me cut these holes. You're not gonna take it out of the uh No. Alright. It'll, it'll disintegrate. Good question. <laughs> so anyway, um take a little soil out, poke a little plant in there. And just as Zach was wandering, the uh, cardboard does disintegrate eventually. This is two and I don't really mind. Hey, look at that. It's two and... Anyway. So there you have it. That's how I planted it. Show the other ones on the other side. Alright, so we got this one here and that down there. That's all good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do commentary, Mom. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's all planted up. Oh boy, I have been trying to get this done for so long. And um, there it is finally. Anyway, so as you can see, my ingenious plan is that um, I got these, these little twigs. And I just kind of poked them in kind of at, a, at an, an acute angle. And that holds the, uh, the plastic so that it doesn't crush the young seedling as it grows. But anyway, I'm going to water it in now. And guess what? I finally got some tomatoes that are decent size. And I think I'm going to transplant them today into this, um, this sack here. Um, I just put down some... <laughs> Thank you very much. Crow, crowing rooster. Anyway, I just put down some fertilizer and there was some, um, down, what did I tell you, what do you call it? Oh boy, azomite. There was some azomite that was in there from before. And so I'm just mixing it in a little bit. And then I'm going to just sink in. I think I'm going to plant just two. I'm going to be very good and not overcrowd them. But this is a Japanese tree filet or tree filet. I don't know what it's called. It's got a, what is it? it's called a potato leaf. Uh, that is to say it has leaves that are not, not like this kind of tomato. It's all uh, um, segmented, not segmented, but uh, entire, so it's called a potato leaf, which is not, it doesn't really, I guess it kind of does look like a potato, sort of. I guess at first sight you might think, you might not think tomato, you would think potato so that's why it's called potato leaf so um just like i was talking about yesterday with the brassicas you can plant 
a tomato all the way to the very top and all of these this stem here will make a root will make roots and it'll strengthen the plant and um, it'll uh, establish itself that much better so I'm going to plant it deep look how deep that hole is and then I'm gonna just gonna see very good that's perfect so I'm gonna plant another one nice and deep You do not know the load off my mind because I've been wanting to put these in for a long time. Wanting to get something into this sack before it gets crazy. I think I'm going to put um, nasturtiums in. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it'll get too wily. I don't know. I have to think about it some more. 